Well, hello everyone. My name is Oliver. I'm from Flowcore. I'm the CEO and co-founder, and we are a data platform for developers. So most organizations have constant data pains, including data migration pains. It becomes worse as time passes and the environment and the tech changes. And the result is spiraling costs and lack of flexibility. The root cause of this is that they are writing directly into complex data structures. The solution is to use a logbook as the source. You record every single change in the logbook, you derive databases from the logbook, and the logbook becomes the single source of truth. The benefits of this is full replayability, which means that you have unprecedented flexibility and no more migration pains. You get a unified data ecosystem, giving you control over the data. The best news? Well, it is available at flowcore.io as a standard service. You can ingest data from anywhere. You can transform data using your programming language of choice. You can load data to any data destination. The user interface is both low-code and high-code. This is event sourcing and CQRS, the holy grail of data management. Many say that this is impossible, but we're making the impossible available to the masses. This is made for software engineers, so it's definitely developer-friendly. It is API first. And it is because you get control over your data, your code, and your processes. The big data market is huge, and it is growing. Our competition includes other startups that haven't really launched yet, the data mesh, which is more of a concept, organizations building their own solution, but mainly it is the modern data stack, the ETL, extracting data from the complex data structures, transforming it, loading it, and putting it into data, data warehouses and data lakes where you can use it for business intelligence or you can put it back into the complex data structures using reverse ETL. Granted, there is a strong ecosystem around this, but using it adds to data complexity. And you get to, you get to need even more data engineers, and this really only works for big enterprises. Our focus is on the smaller and medium-sized uh, organizations, mainly because this is the blue ocean. Our competitive advantage is that we are the first standard logbook fixing a basic problem in data, namely the single source of truth. Our customers love it. Take the IoT scale up, slashing their cloud costs, or the aquaculture company now getting ready to join the AI revolution, or the software consultant who exclaimed, wow, just wow. We use a freemium model, so we do both product-led growth and sales-led growth. It goes from a free plan to a pro plan to a team plan to a custom plan for larger customers with dedicated resources. And we do this with loads of sales service and a strong sales process, which involves working with integration part partners taking over the implementation details for the custom plans. The technical ar architecture is linearly scalable, and we're cloud agnostic. It works also on-premise and all paid plans have sound margins. We started in January, we launched the beta version in August, and our monthly recurring revenue is growing exponentially. The team has started successful companies together and apart for over 20 years. All co-founders are serial entrepreneurs. Julius, the technical innovator, uh, John, the go-to-market expert, Brian, the real-time data wizard, and myself, the data guy, now the numbers guy and the leader. Our key stakeholders are early users and customers, integration and technology partners, and angel investors. We've launched a revolutionary data platform in just eight months with a tiny team and very little funding, but we're ready to revolutionize the data world. Thank you. Hey, Oliver, thank you so much. Just digging into you and the team a bit more, you said you'd, you've all founded some successful companies, so just some high-level bullets on 
what you've done previously. So me and Brian, we go way back. We, we started the first telecom, where, or first private telecom that was there. And me and Julius, we started a uh, simulation-based learning company that we sold to Schlumberger, which is an oil service company. And we all three have been at another uh, scale-up called Flow Tracker with container tracking, an IoT company. Thank you. Great pitch. Thanks very much. Well done for making it this far. Um, Thank you. So what question should I go for? Um, so I guess about competition briefly, I imagine that one place you get competition from is sort of companies like Snowflakes, Databricks, who already do data lakes, warehouse lake house as a service. And a big trend we're seeing at the moment, more generally across the market, is obviously customers wanting to sort of consolidate and simplify their stacks. How would you compete against these players when you're pitching to a, a customer? So, so we're li literally not competing against them. We're actually feeding into it. We are providing that simplicity. So we are one of the data destinations that we can put into, we can put data. We are ready to put data directly into Snowflake and Databricks. So we're simplifying the structure. Thank you. And then one more brief question, if I'm allowed. Yeah. Um, how do you convince customers that you're keeping their data safe and secure? That's at the core of our philosophy that we, that that, that is like, um, but, but that's a question of trust and that you have to build over time, of course. But that's, that's a challenge, of course, and, and that is, when you start out, you, you want to do the things the right way and structure the right way, but that's, and moreover, uh, um, data can reside with us using the, the cloud platforms, but we have, um, from the beginning, done it in a way so that the data can stay with the customers. So it is in, like, in, on their machines or on, on they, their S3 storage. And the processing can be on their machines as well. So ours is more of a technology. We don't necessarily store the data. We would actually rather not. Got it. Thanks very much. Great presentation. Thank you. <laughs>
We're the team to do this because we built infrastructure at AWS, so we know the infrastructure business really well. But it's a really rare skill set to have people who've built world-class infrastructure and then also have been in the alcohol industry. We charge a setup fee, we charge a SaaS fee, but we also charge a 12.5% fulfillment fee. And when you look at booze, right, spirits are, 400 and, are 484 billion, but wine and spirits are 794 billion. That is a massive market, and it's mostly offline. And the reason for that is because infrastructure just doesn't exist. And in five months, we've signed some of the world's biggest brands. We've got Diageo, we've got Johnny Walker, um, and loads more. But the real thing about this is, it's so easy to get to 100 million. 1,050 brands selling six bottles in six different markets every day. What AWS did for cloud infrastructure, we're doing for tax and logistics. It may not be sexy, but uh, the idea here is that it's one-click market deployment that you can just enter into a market as freely as you can. Uh, we are building the operating system for the alcohol industry. And the revenue opportunities don't just stop at B2C and D2C. The idea here is to build the infrastructure. Like, eventually, what I'd love to do is acquire a point-of-sale system and know how many shots of Jameson are poured on St. Patrick's Day and then use that data to sell more booze. Tipple, it's the next generation for alcohol industry. Thank you. Oh, sorry, it's on. Uh, quick pitch. Quick question, how do you monitor all of the regulatory overflow, particularly in 11 different countries, and something like alcohol, which changes quite a lot? Uh, yeah, so we've got partners who do all of that. So they're all uh, tax specialists in the local jurisdictions. So it's very similar to an employer of record model. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, good pitch. Um, alcohol in general as a trend, and yes, maybe here at this conference, people are drinking alcohol, but you know, generally there is a, a move in some geographies away. Yeah, how do you see the trend of alcohol sales in general, and, and what are you doing to mitigate that? Uh, well, it's actually pretty interesting. So uh, alcohol consumption is generally on the down, but the alcohol by value is on the way up. So volume is down, value is up. And that's where we play. We play in the, uh, the high-value spirits. Thank you. Very smooth presentation. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned you've got some really impressive traction with some very big brands already, despite being very young. Um, how do you think about, I guess, first uh, catering to those very big brands as well as the smaller players like you used to have for your own business? Mm -hmm. um, and related to that, making sure that you don't get captive by any of those very, very big players as you're thinking about your product roadmap and pro product development going forward? Uh, I think you kind of have to take this as a, a sort of wider sort of infrastructure view. The idea here is that we solve a problem for selling cross borders. We don't solve it for anyone in particular but we do customize things like based on SAP and all that sort of stuff. We're not really catering to those people because they need what we do. Uh, and the idea is like you use it or you don't. Um, and they're, once we've shared the roadmap on it, they're going, well, we never thought this was possible. So they're going, yes, but they're so far behind. So they're not really demanding the roadmap. We're just innovating. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, great pitch. Um, you talk about a fulfillment fee. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about the extent at which you're handling stock and moving the physical goods around? Yeah, so we integrate with a logistics provider, we pick up the stock, um, it then goes into a, one of our partner warehouses that then gets checked into stock, it stays under bond, so it's all tax suspended, duty suspended, then it leaves the warehouse, um, and if it's going D to C, it goes directly to the consumer uh, through UPS. Uh, we use ISTA3 certified packaging, we provide all that. So it's all uh, white labeled and they never see that and it's all insured in transit. Um, we don't physically ever touch it. We're an orchestration service and we use partners for all of that. Okay, great, thank you. Good, great, thank you. All right, y'all ready for one more? I see somebody sleeping. No sleeping. All right, we got one more left. <laughs> We're almost there. Uh, all right, next is Hawk Federson with Pressy Taste. I just always love playing with these fun names. They're so unique. You guys are so clever. 
Uh, Hawk, all right, come on out, brother. He's huge, by the way, just FYI. He's very tall, very big. Hawk, come on out, man. Wow, awesome to be here. Before I get started, big thank you to the amazing team at SaaStock. At every other trade show, it's tumbleweed time right now. Nobody's there anymore. The fact that all of you are still here is just further testament to the absolutely awesome job they did at putting this together. And thank you for presenting me this stage to talk about something that I'm truly passionate about. Presitaste AI has created the self-driving car functionality for the professional kitchen. And that's really important because kitchens, restaurants are having problems. Even though they're posting record revenues, profits are lower and lower every month. And that is because of a major shortage in labor, especially in that space, and the rising cost of ingredients, especially in the recent inflation. Most restaurants have almost exhausted the possibility to increase prices. So they now have two options. Either they're putting in very expensive robotics, turning your favorite restaurant into a vending machine. Or they use Presitaste SaaS software to make their restaurant more efficient, to help their crew achieve more with less. My name is Hauke. Before moving to Connecticut for Presitaste, I spent 10 years in the industrial manufacturing side uh, of the food industry. I was in charge of production planning at uh, your favorite chocolate factory in Germany, uh, 300 employees, three shifts, but it wasn't really hard to plan production because I had the right tools. Full inventory transparency and predictive demand modeling made it very easy to know what we needed to produce. Fast forward five years, and Presitaste is bringing this same technology into the professional kitchen as a SaaS solution. Our secret sauce, Vision AI. We always start, we always go full circle with live crew guidance through screens, and then we have our cameras to build the data that we drive the restaurant on later. That's actually the CEO of Intel, and he couldn't break it when we were presenting our Chipotle solution live on stage. We have over a 1,000 ovens with cameras already in the field, and almost 100 grills. Overall, we brought out 2,500 systems in the last 18 months. Biggest customer, over 10,000 locations. Smallest customer, just three locations. It's truly applicable throughout the entire industry. Our strategic advice is coming from the former um, CEO of McDonald's and Burger King, who each have their invest e own investment funds and invested into Presitaste. And from Danny Meyer, New York, hospitality royalty, uh, founder of Shake Shack. The McDonald's and Burger King guy, they don't agree on everything, and they didn't in the past, but they do agree that this industry will digitize and needs to digitize. We won two Kitchen Innovation Awards at the National Restaurant Association Show in Chicago this year, but I'm even prouder of having won the AI Beyond Borders Award uh, from the state of Germany because it's an award for sustainability in the space of AI, because we are saving a ton of food waste. Our solution is proven to reduce food cost by just eliminating the part that would have been thrown away. So here's the deal. We welcome you to join our team, our dream team of investors, and help us continue our 3x growth journey. We are at 3 million ARR already, and together with you, we want to grow further. I want to end on a personal note. We have a rare shot at changing how this industry operates, and this industry needs to change. The United Nations has estimated that a food waste were to be a country, it would be the third largest emitter of CO2 equivalent. We can change that. Under the passionate leadership of Laura, our co-founder, we've crafted a team of experts from the industry, former NASA, from our um, MIT, PhDs, etc., all united under the mission that we want to leave this planet a little bit better than we found it. Please reach out to us if you want to be a part of this journey, if you want to be a part of our mission. 
I'm only filling in for my CEO, Ingo. He's, his wife is expecting child number five. She put him on the no-flight list. I've never pitched before, but I'm happy to be here. If he asks how I did, tell him I did all right. Hey, yeah, great job. I think Ingo would be very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the sales cycle length, given the amount of investment kind of required in machinery and um, from, from a restaurant side, and then also what that means in terms of like the ACV for that 3 million ARR? Very, very important question. So the solution has been built over several years. We came to the startup game in a slightly different fashion. For 10 years, we have never raised outside capital. We just grew on revenue, uh, being professional services provider to the industry, to the largest of the largest. And now we're making this technology available to restaurants of all sizes as a uh, software as a service platform product. That was only possible through the funding that we received in our Series A beginning of last year. And the ARR, before that we had professional service revenue, now we've changed pretty much 100% of our revenue to just be an ARR. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, another great pitch. Well done. Um, I'm sure he'll get you, you to do many more. Um, I also have another question on your go-to-market, actually. Um, so you have, obviously, the hardware components, the cameras, as well as the SaaS that you're selling now. How much of that are you building in-house? And is there an opportunity to kind of accelerate that go-to-market motion through partnerships, perhaps? You hit the nail on the head. Without partnership, it would definitely not be possible. Two and a half thousand systems in the field, we couldn't have installed all of them on our own. We are partnered with Wellbuilt, who is uh, one of the biggest manufacturers of stainless steel products for the kitchen. And some of our cameras arrive X-Works um, from the factory uh, already installed. Uh, we are also partnered with Frankie Food Services. We are their only digital partner. They make roughly two billion in sales of professional kitchens. They build the professional kitchens and they have the installer network, the thousands of white vans that we just don't have. So the partnerships allow us to remain laser focused on being a technology company, a software company in this field. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, well done, great pitch. Uh, super quick one on the hardware. Like, how long does that last for? Does it need to be replaced? Just a quick comment on that once it's in. I had hoped that somebody would ask this question. The CEO of Intel, he came out because we're actually using, for the AI inference on the edge, Intel CPUs. We are not requiring CPUs. So every computer that you can see, computers that you can buy at Best Buy anywhere, they are potential for us to be used. And we use small form factor edge devices, just standard uh, computers. We have some in our office that have been running for five years straight and we expect about that much lifetime out of them. We usually sell them to the customer pretty much at cost on day one to make this as CAPEX um, less as possible and then only have the software as a service license. The security cameras that we use, pff, I have them running since 10 years. They, they, there is pretty much nothing that can break about that anymore. Last question, I think. Have you found it easier to go to clients with profit saving or the ESG angle of savings? I wish it was the latter. I would like to work in an industry where it was the latter. It's still the first. It's our labor optimization piece that gets us the customers. That's what's most relevant because that's their most pressing problem. But the food saving is real. The saving in food cost is real and it's a cherry on top. It's I'm so thankful to be standing in front of you. This is huge recognition for the team that made all of this happen. And we want to go even further. We want to establish a label, a sort of certification of saying this restaurant is running food waste zero because they manage their processes through artificial intelligence. Thank you all and enjoy this awesome city. about that, Matt? 
Oh, uh, apart from the names, apart from the, yeah, the right. sexy I'm, names. Right, I'm sorry, I'm still stuck <laughs> on the names. I can't help it. I mean, you know, I'm a marketer. It's natural, okay? Uh, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. very three, interesting. Three very interesting, very different companies. I don't know if we got any favorites uh, in the yeah. crowd. Good questions as well, uh, judges. So we've got a couple of minutes for the judges yeah. to tally up the scores, uh, and then the, the winner of the best SaaS startup 2023 uh, will yeah. be crowned. Um, yeah, I, I would be curious. I, mean, I don't know if we've got a, a handheld mic here, but like in, in terms of the audience, like, do we have favorites? And this is not going to affect the judges' scoring because they've already scored. But uh, let, let's see uh, a couple of favorites. Um, I'm going to start over here. Yeah. Which, who, who, who are you going to vote for? You're with Flowcore. You can't vote. Why am I picked somebody who's with the company? Um, let's try somebody else that isn't. Lady in the purple jacket. Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't have the favorites, actually. They're so different. I want different you to have ideas. a favorite. <laughs> I will feel bad if someone, you know. If I mean, if you're going to pick one, if you're going to pick one, which one do you pick? There's one of three. I guess the last one. The last one. Yes. Okay. And why? Um, I kind of like the pitch, and we are judging the pitching, right? I mean, they are judging it. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Let's ask somebody else. Man in the glasses in the middle. Present days for me. Uh, pitch was awesome, but the energy to end the product. I yep. also work with a B2B SaaS in the FMB, and that's an awesome product. So it okay. looks really good. We've got two for pressy taste over here. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, I see somebody else who works for Flowcore, but I could ask you. Nikhil, who are you going to vote for? I think for me, it will also be pressy taste. I'm in AI, and I think that's Three. like. Yeah. This sounds unanimous. Like, you, you guys are going to be. Uh, I don't know, like, if they, ha if they haven't won, I'm going to question your judgment. The, the, the alcohol one. Dr so the, the alcohol one, hey, Drizzly was acquired We like the alcohol ones, don't we? Yeah, yeah. we, yeah, I mean, you know. we like it. I don't know why. Hey, uh, you know. I don't know why. I've got the shakes, yeah, but, you know. know. I'm a, I like tequila, I mean, you yeah, know, yeah, come yeah. on. But we won't talk about yeah. last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, I mean, Drizzly was acquired by Uber in 2021 for a billion. Okay, I mean, you know, yeah, maybe, I think. Uh, could be some correlations I mean, there. I mean, again, but we don't have any favorites. We don't have any favorites, no. I'm completely unbiased. I rejected the case of tequila they sent me, okay? Yeah. I said, no, <laughs> you cannot buy my favor. <laughs> we Good. actually do have the results here. You have the results. Jeez, I, yeah. that was quick. We've got some <laughs> super, maybe the AI is doing the math here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We could ask ChatGPT who, uh, who's the winner. We can, definitely can I get could. a sneak peek? Uh, you can get a with, sneak, why don't we call them this, out? Yeah. Let's, let's get, get everybody to come let's out. Let's get them out, let's speak, let's speak to the three finalists. Okay. Get them back. Welcome them as they come on out. Come on out. Come on, y'all three. Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Got excellent job, by the way. Very smooth pitches. We see why uh, you were the three out of the 100 that, that made it here. So I think you're all going to be, uh, I think, looking at a very, very bright yes. future. Yes. Uh, but obviously, we can only crown one of you. And there is no second or third place, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling? Good? Are you glad it's over? <laughs> Don't, yeah? yeah. <laughs> do you want to win? Who, who wants to win the most? I think we all do. We yeah. all do. <laughs> good, good, good. On a scale of one to 10, how confident do you guys feel? All of you 10? Anybody uh, feel like I'm that? just glad it's not a beauty contest. <laughs> 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 well, we, we could be doing, there was mixed martial arts here, I think, on Saturday, so we could, uh, we, we could see, we could hey, find it fun. out. Yeah? yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. I'd be down for that. All right. I think, I think it's time. I'm curious. I want to see what's on the back of this paper, and we can see it before, okay. we're not going to get it on the camera. Okay. All right. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Jesus. Man. <laughs> I don't know, man. You want to break the news? Should we? Uh, no, I think uh, let, let's break the news. Uh, okay. Well, how do we do this in suspenseful style? You know, Matt. No. Okay. So the winner, I'm going to do this really slowly, of the Global SaaS Startup Pitch Competition 2023, the best, basically the best SaaS startup on the planet right now. Right now. According to people in this room, <laughs> but that's like Experts, pretty, that's... pretty, pretty damn good audience. Yeah. Is. Tipple. Yeah. Tipple. Hey, hey. hey, hey. Awesome. Congratulations, Owen. Okay, well, <laughs> three people said taste, but obviously because it's a great product. But it, Tipple, Owen, 
how do you feel? Say a few words. Best SaaS startup 2023. Uh, yeah, it's, it's my best SaaS stock so far, really. Um, <laughs> just thought there'd be a novelty check or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, uh, well, I, I guess some drinks tonight, direct to Owen. Yeah. yeah there's yeah. a D to E. Yeah, you yeah, It's a bad joke, guys. <laughs> but, you know. Fantastic. No, thanks so much, and, like, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to everybody in the crowd and tell everybody about Tipple. It's, like, been a fantastic SaaS stock, and it's been, yeah, great. I think drinks... At the you owe the judges some drinks as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, but you can't, that could be bribery, so don't uh, do that. Uh, but uh, congrats. Yeah. Guys, obviously there's no second or third place, but obviously the audience thinks you're both fantastic, as, as we do as and well. It, and, and it was by one point. One point. It was one point. I mean, you didn't have to bring that up. You didn't have to bring that up. Uh, and they probably are going to look at the scorecards to see who came second and third. But uh, uh, Hoken, uh, Amazing, like what you're doing, what, you, what you've built, uh, and, and where you've got. Any thoughts uh, on how you're feeling? Uh, but also, uh, uh, any thoughts to the winner as well? I've all um, I'm sailing together with a guy, uh, Ben Lyon. He does Lion Rum in the US from Maryland. And I've already recommended Tipple to him because it's an amazing product. He always complains about the complexities of uh, the legal system surrounding selling booze. And uh, it's an amazing company that you have built. We're all winners here. We're all got to present in front of all of you. And I'm thankful for the opportunity. Oh, awesome. there you go. What a guy, what a guy. And lucky we didn't Good have to point. fight you. Lucky Owen didn't have to fight you. <laughs> All right, and Oliver, uh, as well, um, thoughts? You know, how, how are you feeling? It's congratulations, fantastic pitch. It's fantastic to be here. It's a yep. fantastic event, and it's a privilege to be on the big stage here. And it's a Good. Great pitch, great product as well. So, like, congrats on what you're building. Yeah. Three yeah. fantastic SaaS entrepreneurs here. The future uh, of SaaS. Uh, obviously, there's a, a 200,000 uh, investment into Tipple, and they get part of the acceleration program for, for CMS. I want to thank our judges as well, uh, if I'm going to get your names. We've got the man from CMS, <laughs> that's good enough, Ben Tickler, <laughs> JP Morgan, Sam Marchant, and you as well, Kat uh, as well. So, thank you so much, uh, the judges. Uh, it's been a great and very difficult uh, startup competition to, to get it down to this three. Uh, and now alcohol for SaaS is a thing, uh, <laughs> who would have known? But it's also quite apt that as we wrap up SaaS doc, obviously the, the expo floor is still open, uh, that this evening we celebrate the end of SaaS doc in fine style, uh, probably with you know, some of the best Guinness uh, in town. Uh, you've signed up Guinness? So they, 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 Diageo. You have Diageo, there we go. So it's already done. But congrats, everyone. Uh, well, uh, congrats, everyone, and congrats, Owen, uh, even more. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for being you know, a great part of, uh, of SASOC 2023. I've got to say thanks to yes. this guy, oh. being a, a legend again, hosting us <laughs> on his honeymoon. I don't know how many honeymoons you can spend at SASDOC, like whilst remaining married. Obviously more than one. More than one. Yeah. More than one. It was better the second time. Yeah. Matt, any, any final <laughs> thoughts of SASDOC 2023? Oh, uh, I mean, fan fantastic. I, I think there were just awesome, you know, speakers and great content, great value. You guys were a blast. I, we, I asked for a round of applause for everybody but you guys. So I do want to applaud for you guys because you are what makes SASDOC special. Uh, it's you guys. You've been incredible. Uh, and beyond this, I look forward to interacting with you guys online and staying in touch through social. Yeah. You know? Rumors of pints at Horse Show House after this for those that are sticking around in Dublin and not flying home this evening. Uh, so if you've yeah. still got the energy, the stamina for a few more Guinness, then yeah. that's, where, that's where it's at. Um, good stuff. Well, everyone, thanks so much for being a great part of SASOC 2023. Thanks, judges. Thanks, SASDOC team. Thank you, you guys. Yeah. Right. See you next time.